Hello everyone, how are you doing? This is MD Tech here with another quick tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to resolve the VC Runtime 140.dll is missing error you might be getting on your Windows computer. So this should be a fairly quick tutorial and we're honestly going to just jump right into it. So assuming you need this file, I'm going to show you guys how to get it. And it's going to be a completely free and easy walkthrough for you guys. So we're going to start by opening up a web browser. It doesn't matter which one, but you want to navigate over to google.com. And now into Google, you want to type in VC Runtime 140.dll download. And then you want to hit enter. Now, the best match that's not an advertisement should be from dllfiles.com, or should be hosted on that respective website. And the name of the hyperlink should read out VC Runtime 140.dll free download. You want to left click on that link to open it up. And now you want to scroll down on this page. You don't want to click on the client demo button here. You want to go down a little bit until you get to the available versions. Now, depending if you're running a 32 or 64 bit version of the operating system, you're going to have to select your respective download. And there will be a little modification you'll have to make later in the video that I'll show you guys how to do. But again, you just want to select the correct version of the DLL file. Most people should be for 64-bit versions of Windows, so I'm going to select the 64-bit download, the most recent and up-to-date one, so it's the first link here. Again, if you're running a 32-bit download, you want to select the respective 32-bit one. And if you selected the correct download, when you clicked on that button, it should start downloading as a zip file, which it does. So I'm going to show that in my downloads folder, and then I'm going to move that over to my desktop here. And close out of the web browser at this time. So now I'm going to open up this folder and I'm going to left click and drag this DLL file over to the desktop. And then you can delete this folder, it's no longer necessary. So now at this point you should have the DLL file on our desktop. And now you want to make sure you have hidden files and folders view disabled, meaning you can access hidden files and folders that are normally hidden from view for normal Windows users. So we're going to go into that by opening up the star menu and typing in folder options. Best match that comes up should say File Explorer Options directly above Control Panel. You want to left click on that one time to open it up. And now you want to left click on the View tab. And then underneath where it says Hidden Files and Folders, you want to select Show Hidden Files, Folders, and Drives. Once you've done that, you want to left click on Apply and OK. And now you want to head back into the Star menu. And you want to type in Computer. And best match should say this PC directly above desktop app. You want to left click on that. Windows 7 and Windows 8, if you just type in computer or system, you want to just get to a screen that looks like this. And now you want to go underneath the drive that Windows is installed on. It's usually the local disk, and there will usually be a Windows icon right above the hard disk, so it's pretty easy to distinguish. So you want to open that up. Now you want to double click on the Windows folder. And I should know when I mean open up, Again, double click on the folder, so it should be pretty self-explanatory. And for Windows 64-bit operating systems, you want to drop this DLL file into the System32 folder. If you're running a 32-bit operating system, you want to look for a folder that says SysWow64. So again, SysWow64, so S-Y-S, and then capital W-O-W-64. And like I said, just drag and drop it right in. I'm going to drop it into the System32 folder. You have to provide it administrator permissions, so click on continue here. Again, if you're running 32-bit, you want to do it with the SysWow folder. Even though I don't believe there's really any harm in doing it in the System32 folder for either method. But nonetheless, I would recommend restarting your computer once you've completed this. And everything should be good. The VC runtime should be available on your computer for any applications that were using it prior. So again, I do hope this brief video was able to help you guys out. And as always, thank you for watching, and I look forward to catching you all in the next video. Goodbye.